While not everybody has access to a Kali Linux machine, there are nearly 2 billion Android phones out there. Today, we'll show you how to turn any Android device into a Kali Linux machine on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Userland refers to the space outside of an operating system's kernel, meaning anything that doesn't actually have root access. Thanks to an article on Nullbyte by Writer Distortion, we can use an app of the same name to install Kali Linux or any other Android operating system that's supported on any unrooted Android phone. While this is pretty incredible, there are a couple limitations to this, but in general, you're able to communicate with the instance of whatever Linux device you want via SSH or VNC. Now, depending on what you want to run, this is a pretty important decision because VNC gives you a full graphic user style interface, whereas SSH is more simple but limits you to the command line only. Now today, we're going to explore some command line tools, so we'll be using SSH, but you can also check this out using VNC if you want to explore this with a GUI interface, maybe if you're a little bit more of a beginner and you want to be able to click around and have the kind of general interface experience you would expect with Kali Linux. Now, in order to follow along, you will need any unrooted Android phone. And in this example, I'll be using a Samsung phone, but you can use pretty much anything because it doesn't need to be rooted in order to work. Once you have one, then we can begin. Now, to get started with installing a Linux system on your Android device, you'll need to have a way of communicating with it. As I mentioned before, we're going to be using SSH to communicate with our instance of Kali, of Kali Linux. So to do so, we can go ahead and use the recommended app, which is ConnectBot, although I've downloaded Juice SSH uh, to go with a previous version that used to work, and I'm going to continue using it for this particular guide. They both work roughly the same, so you can use whichever one is your preference. Um, in general, I find that Juice SSH works just fine for SSH-based connections, although ConnectBot may work a little bit better for VNC. Now, once you have this installed uh, and we have a way to communicate, we need to download the Userland app. So you'll need to look for this icon and then go ahead and press install. And then once this download completes, you'll be able to open this up. And basically what will happen is you'll get a list of available operating systems that you can run. And these are very stripped down versions. So they won't have some of the tools that you might normally rec uh, recognize. Even things like IF config or IP config, all that stuff will just not work. So uh, in order to get that working, we'll need to install a couple things. And even installing that won't work until we do an update. So we've got kind of our list of things to do ahead of us. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit of work before we get there, but once we do, we'll be able to run some really interesting tools without needing to rely on rooting our device. Now that this is installed, let's go ahead and open it for the first time, and we'll see there should be a list of different operating systems, and while initially we needed to work with Ubuntu, we can, or Debian, we can now go ahead and download Kali directly, although as I mentioned before, this is going to be a very stripped down version of Kali Linux. So it'll need uh, the ability to access our storage, so we'll click OK, and this will allow us to be able to actually download this and um, have a little drive on our system that's hosting this Linux system. So here we'll go ahead and type in our information, and then a password, and then a VNC password. Now, once you're done with this, hit done and then continue. And as, as you can see, the VNC password is very picky. So it needs to be, to be between six and eight characters. All right, there we go. Um, I'm not gonna save this. And then as soon as this is done, we'll need to select a type of connection that we want to um, use to connect with this a device. So we'll go ahead and click SSH and we'll be able to create this Kali Linux instance and then communicate with it via SSH as soon as the download and unpacking of the Kali Linux files is complete. 
All right, now that it's downloaded the app, you can see that it's copying it to local storage. And then after it extracts everything, this should be set up and ready for us to start working with. Now we'll need to select which type of connection we're going to use. And since previously we indicated SSH, we're going to be using our tool that we downloaded in the first step, which is either going to be ConnectBot or Juice SSH, depending on which one you decided to go with. Once this process completes, we should see something asking us which one we want to select. Here we go. Now, initially, this will try to drop us into our SSH default program. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the password I set. And then I should see that I am in Kali in user land. So you can see I am now uh, the username I set up at localhost, which means I have successfully loaded a Kali system on this Android device. So let's try something really basic, ifconfig. It doesn't work. So you might note that pretty much nothing is gonna work on this very stripped down version. Now, the reason for that is because the installation process is already pretty long with how many files it needs to download and install. So trying to get everything all at once is just not gonna work. So instead, we'll need to try to install this, but unfortunately that won't work either. Let's take a look and see why. So if I type apt install and then net tools, you can see that, oops, I also need to be sudo. You can see here that it'll attempt to do so and usually it'll run into some errors where it's not able to resolve something. In some cases it might be able to fetch it, but uh, a lot of the times it'll actually not be able to. Now actually it looks like my example works, so now if I type ifconfig, it should succeed, but a lot of tools won't. So let's go ahead and run an update first to make sure that our system is prepared and ready to use on this uh, Kali device. So let's go ahead and type apt install update and our new Kali system will also, oops, need root constantly because you have to remember that we are uh, just a guest on the system, we're not actually root. So then once this update finishes, let's see, oops. There we go. Once this update process finishes, we should have a fresh list of all the sources, meaning that anything that's been updated since this installation was, uh, this uh, particular image was released, will be able to be updated normally and we'll have all the freshest data that we need to keep these pa uh, packages updated. This is also a good step to run before doing an APT upgrade because sometimes some packages in the upgrade will fail if they can't be resolved. So once we have all the information we need to run the upgrade, this would be a good time to go ahead and run that upgrade. But because it does take quite some time, I'm gonna go ahead and skip it for now because it won't impact what we're going to do next. So now we have a list of all the sources in Kali that are available at our fingertips. So what is one of the most interesting things we can do? Well, we can go ahead and use router exploit, which is a really fun tool. And in order to download it, all we need to do is type apt install, oops, sudo apt, ap, uh, install router exploit. Now you can see just like this, we'll type uh, y for yes. And we can go ahead and install this really interesting and fun tool to use against routers and embedded devices on a network and be able to use it from any Android device with a um, maybe five minute installation on a fast internet connection. So this is a really cool way of getting started with some of these tools. And if you wanna use router exploit a little bit more, you can check out our tutorial on using it, but I'm going to address another problem that can be fixed with the installation of a simple tool when you're using SSH on an Android device. Now, as you tend to use this for a while, you'll notice that sometimes the performance of SSH doesn't keep up with whatever it is you're trying to do, and you might either get kicked out or find some other issues with using SSH. 
Now, if you drop your SSH connection in the middle of doing something, this can be extremely frustrating. So screen is a solution that allows you to, to basically disconnect from an SSH screen and then jump back into it later. So if you're starting to get frustrated because your Android device is bugging out a little bit and maybe not connecting properly, you can disconnect from the screen session and then reconnect and see if it works better. This is really useful because you can even theoretically pass a screen session between devices if you're using SSH on maybe a server or Raspberry Pi. So screen is an amazing tool if you want to manage multiple SSH sessions or if you're dealing with something just by SSH. So as soon as this finishes installing Routersploit, we'll go ahead and install screen and we can do the same thing with other tools that are really useful to have on an Android device like Netcat. There we go. Now to install screen, you can just type ap sudo apt install screen. Now to verify we have this working, we can just type man screen. And it looks like we don't have the manual installed, but for now we can type screen tack h. Here we can learn more about how to use it and verify that we've successfully installed it. While there's no doubt that it's extremely useful to have Kali running on an Android device, there are definitely a couple limitations to be aware of. For one, it might not have the same kind of performance with certain sorts of scripts, because you don't really have full root access to the device. Instead, you're simulating a system on top of the operating system, and because of that, you're still limited to the root access that the operating system below you enjoys. So if, before you use this for anything professional or go on a penetration test or something like that, you should definitely try out things at home because you may not be able to do things like establish a socket or other sorts of things when you're doing a scan or some other sort of web-based attack. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts for future episodes or comments on the show, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.